Hey, what's up? GW coming to you live. Uh, we have a little bit of stuff to talk about in today's episode. I don't know if you want to call it an episode, you know, more like a rundown, whatever you want to call it. Um, first of all, I would like to thank a, a couple of friends for taking me and my wife out Saturday to see my man, Brett Michaels. I'd like to thank Jen and her husband, Heath, and Tracy. I would like to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. I had an awesome time. Thank you. So now we got that out of the way. Let's just keep on rolling. A um, couple things uh, that I read. A lot of people are still complaining about Disney World. In fact, just now I read that the Pirates of the Caribbean ride got stuck. And during the time they were stuck, a guest actually urinated in the water there. You know, that might be telling you something. Disney, fix your stuff. People won't do that. Uh, also, the Bruce Willis, greatest Bruce Willis franchise of all time, Die Hard, is now moving to Peacock TV, which I think is great. Um, couldn't uh, couldn't pick a better, better streaming home. Peacock is one of the best streaming apps, in my opinion, next to Disney and HBO Max. So there's that. What else was I going to talk about? What else was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. I watched this really crazy movie this weekend, guys. It's called Beneath Us. And it's on HBO Max. And I don't know who's in it because I was half asleep whenever I watched it. I watched it Sunday morning whenever I got back from the concert. Um, basically, it is about a couple of... Mexican undocumented Mexican workers who all of them have a little bit of a backstory and the one is trying to get his wife and daughter I believe into the United States to do that he needs to get money well how does he get money well and it's a very interesting opportunity comes around a rich Sort of Beverly Hills looking woman comes into the picture and gives them the job. And throughout the whole movie, the movie isn't for everybody because a lot of people are going to watch it and call it racist. Which it kind of is, but it's not directed at anything. It's in the story because it, uh, it just adds to the conflict and the tension going on. Basically, these Beverly Hills people uh, hire these guys to build their houses so they can rent out these houses and then bury them underneath the floor. And it's a pretty cool thriller. I know it sounds really stupid. In fact, halfway through, I was going to turn it off and I was like, you know what, let's see where this goes. And honestly, it was a hell of a hell of a good film. It's underrated to say the very least. Whoever plays the rich woman in here, which I wish I had her name, guys, because she, you almost are terrified of her. It's almost like she looks down at everything and everybody except her husband. It's pretty wild. Check it out. It's, it's a sleeper hit, and I think if more people watch it, they're going to they're gonna really like it. Um, so there's that. Beneath us, like I said, definitely check that out. Also, I noticed something, guys. I don't know if you guys have the Jackass box set. But I bought that thing, you know, years ago. When me and my wife first got married. And it was like, oh yeah, we get everything, right? Wrong. Because if you watch Paramount Plus, which is another great streaming app. They have bits in there that are not in the box set. So upon looking... One of the bits was Johnny Knoxville doing his self-defense test where he sprays himself with pepper spray, shoots himself with a taser gun and, and some other stuff. And it is not on the box set. And I'm like, okay, why is that? Why isn't it there, you know, when it should be there, when Paramount Plus airs it? Here, it's on Jackass the Lost Tapes. So, if you guys are ever wondering, there's 93 bits, apparently, that were cut out from the box set that were put on the Lost Tapes. 
I guess, you know, they had to keep milk in the franchise. I don't know. But you could have actually included the lost tapes in the box set. Ergo, done deal. Um, yeah, it was just kind of a funny coincidence. I was like, what? Also, big, big time news in horror. We got tons of stuff coming down the pike in horror. We have the first footage of Halloween Ends. And apparently the footage that was shown was a brawl between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. Now, if you watch the other one, Halloween and Halloween Kills, you kind of knew it was going to boil down to a fight to the death. Obviously, anyone who even has seen half of this movie will tell you that it's going to end in a big brawl. So I don't know why people were surprised at this because it, it just ultimately seemed where it should end. And my prediction, guys, is that Lori will kill Michael, but before she kills Michael, she is going to probably find out, they're going to write it in the story, as they did... In the, in the other Halloween movies, which if you watch these, three, four don't exist. Remember how uh, Jamie in Halloween 4 was Michael Myers' niece? They're probably going to pull something like that where Jamie or Laurie Strode is the sister of Michael Myers. There's going to be some connection to make it sort of an emotional charged kill that's what i'm thinking and i could be very wrong about this but based on what the other movies have done i would just sort of pigeon toe that in there and say that's a done deal um in a couple in about what's today may second in about 11 days the evil dead video game is going to hit consoles and pc and I actually pre-ordered a copy. I have loved The Evil Dead since I have actually seen it whenever I was a teenager. Went to my local video store. That was one of the first horror films I ever rented. And I, I loved the whole mythology of it. I even have followed it all the way up until the end of Ash vs. Evil Dead. And I have to tell you that I am very excited about this movie, or this game, but I am very skeptical about it too. Because when I say skeptical, is it looks like it's a fan's dream. It looks like it's multiplayer and single player. It looks like just in the single player campaign that you can play some of the best scenes from the movie. As well as you could go through the whole thing with bots like you did with Alien Fire, Aliens Fire Team. But I'm skeptical about how well it's going to control. If you can get the controls down right... You're pretty much good. Another good horror video game to watch that I've been really following under the radar is called The Quarry. It's a video game sort of in the vein of a 1980s horror film. And it looks really good. It's the, you know, kids go on a camping trip type deal and they are stalked by a killer. And it looks pretty sweet. So I think you guys should check that out. Um... The only thing with that game is I think the deluxe version is pretty expensive, but I'm going to have to check into it later. I don't know much else about it, but it does look good. Let's see what else is coming down the pike in horror. Another Quiet Place movie is being released. Did you guys know that? No, well, neither did I. Uh, apparently, it's going to be the third and maybe final film in the franchise. So we're going to have to check that out. Um, also, yesterday I was on YouTube and I saw that two movies had come out that I kind of grew up with. One was Friday the 13th Part 2, released May 1st, 1980, which was pretty cool. Um, that one is pretty... It's pretty... Uh, interesting for a couple of things the lead 
heroine Adrian King in the first film, who killed Jason's mother, beheaded her, within minutes of Friday the 13th Part 2 starting is killed. Wiped out, which proves in that franchise that anybody could go at any time. It also signified not only the legend of Jason as a, you know, sort of Neanderthal backwoods savage with a, a wheat bag on his head, but it also ushered in one of the ways to pretty, pretty much put an end to him where at the end of Friday the 13th Part 2, the final girl puts on his mother's sweater, pretends to be his mother, and gets the kill shot. That was notable for a couple of things. The only other thing that I can think it's notable for was that it was the second entry in the Sean Cunningham deal where he directed it. And the other movie that came out, guys, was called V. Now, I don't think I've ever public, publicly talked about V, but V, I had seen that thing probably four or five times growing up. It used to be on every, every year in Memorial Day, and it was pretty badass, guys. And if you guys don't know anything about it, I'm going to break down just a little bit about it. Basically, UFOs, huge UFOs show up, and... In the first couple of episodes, there's a character called Mike Donovan, and he is a news reporter. And I think he was filming something like a war or something. And all of a sudden, the fighting stops, and he looks up, and there's these giant UFOs. Well, he is determined, guys, hell-bent determined to get on there and see what's going on. In the meantime, the visitors eventually make contact with humans, and say hey you know we just need some help we need some water and this and that well that's where it all changes guys because the visitors want to take over and in one of the most pivotal episodes mike donovan has a fight with one of them in a the hallway and his camera bashes the creature up the alien in the side of the face and his face peels revealing their true nature they are reptiles guys and it was amazing what they did. Also, point of fact, Robert Engeland, before playing Freddy Krueger, or maybe during, I can't remember, is also in the movie. He plays Willie, a Martian who knows that the other Martians have evil intentions, so he joins the Resistance, guys. And it was a pretty cool movie, and it was a miniseries, actually. It ran for a couple of nights. They used to do that thing back in the 80s. They would make a cool movie, you know, like a week-long movie, but they'd do it like an hour installments, okay? I can remember a couple of those guys. V, Tales from the Gold Monkey, Shogun of all things. Yeah, I remember that. They used to do that. And you know what? That was a format that I kind of missed. They also did it with Phantom of the Opera with Charles Dance and Terry Polo. They broke it down. I think it was a great two- or three-night event, you know? But that's when it was a different time. People were glued to their TVs. They wanted something different. And that's what they had. They had miniseries like that. Now they do it. They still do that. But, I mean, it's not the same. It's not the same as the originals, guys. So you guys can check that out. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. What else is going on? Everybody's still talking about the slap between Chris Rock and Will Smith. And apparently Will Smith is banned from the Academy for a very long time. Chris Rock's not going to make any jokes about it till he gets paid. And honestly, the backlash from that for Will Smith was crazy, guys. He got dropped from two movies on Netflix, okay? And Bad Boys 4... At least Martin Lawrence come out, and, or yeah, Bad Boys 4, is coming out and saying, hey, it's still going to happen. Which, if you cancel everything else that Will Smith ever did, at least bring Bad Boys 4 back and let's close it out. Because we're not getting a Beverly Hills Cop 4. I mean, that's that's inevitable, and I'm still waiting for that. Um, 
But yeah, uh, like I said, big ups to my friends taking me out, taking Dawn and I out, showing us a really cool time. Uh, also, one more thing, one more thing. Um, I don't know, guys, if this ever happened to you, but a couple weeks ago, I'm sitting around the house and my best friend calls me and I haven't talked to him in years. And when you start talking to him, why is it that you go right back like nothing ever happened if you're awesome friends? And this kid's been through a lot. And, uh, you know, I heard he had some problems in his marriage, guys. And uh, I wanted to talk to him because, you know, we boys. And uh, I said, look, I said, we can talk about anything you want. And I found out he was doing okay. But when you hear about somebody having marriage troubles or just troubles in life in general, you know, serious stuff, you want to be there for them. And, uh, you know, Dre, I'm always here. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you get to watch this too. And I'm not mad y'all didn't call me, but I'm here if you need me. But I just wanted to drop a line to you guys. I know I've been MIA. Uh, I was going to do one Sunday morning. After watching Beneath uh, Beneath Us, but uh, I was just dead dog tired. Concerts are fun to go to, but they will tear you down the next day. Because me and my wife, we ain't we ain't night night people. You know what I mean? I used to be. I can't stay up till two, three o'clock in the morning every day, but I can do it, you know, occasionally. But uh, you know, I just wanted to drop a line and say that. Uh, and I really appreciate everybody wishing me a happy birthday. Cause I told I told my wife, I said, you know. I said, it's amazing how many people appreciate the fact you're alive, you know, that you were born, you know. My wife always bitches, well, you know, I don't want to celebrate my birthday. I'm like, look here, look, look, woman, if you weren't born, I wouldn't have a wife, you know what I mean? That's the way I look at it. But you guys can take that for whatever it's worth. But I just wanted to drop a line, say hi, say I'm still kicking. And, uh, you know, hopefully this weekend I'll drop another video, you know, watch more movies. Oh! One more thing, Mont or uh, the last drive-in season four is on Shutter on demand now. They did uh, Night of the Living Dead, and they did Arthur Pop Haggis. I think I got that right. It's an Italian movie. It's pretty sick, though. I seen it. I don't know if I did a movie review on it or not, but it was pretty wicked. And the end scene is basically unforgettably gross and disgusting anything that a horror film would love a horror film fan would love so big ups to joe bob and darcy for bringing that back because that's the only reason i got shutter i love them guys I, I i don't know what it is i try to prop them and give them props anytime i can because even if it's a movie i have in my collection i will watch it just to see their commentary so thank you shutter Thanks for all my people, you know, sending me birthday wishes. Thanks to Jen, Tracy, Heath. Thank you to my wife for, you know, making it an um, amazing birthday. And thank you to my man, Dre. And everybody else who's down with me, I just want to say thank you, too. And you're the reason that I get on here, all y'all. And I keep telling you this because I want you guys to get involved in all this stuff, to find this out and whatnot. So... You guys can take it for its worth. GW, I will catch you this weekend.